You unlock this benefit with the key of Patreon. Beyond is another dimension. A dimension of thought. A dimension of speculation. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both waffle and substance. Of things and ideas. You've just crossed into the podcast zone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Trekking Through the Twilight Zone. We are about to sink a big one and then we're going to drink down the chaser. Uh, and I'm joined at the bar by Julian. Julian, how are you doing? You okay? Uh, I'm doing quite fine. I wish I had some uh, love potions. Yeah. Just pass them out. Pass them out at parties. I, <laughs> I, I don't believe that this... Uh, I don't really believe that it's it's so um, painful. I mean, I don't believe the, the central premise of this episode. It's so terrible that people love you. That's all I want in life. <laughs> we shall get into it but the, yes this episode we have reached the chaser uh and in this episode um i this this episode this, this episode sort of irritated me i find but yeah weasley little man um um desperate for love stalking some poor woman um basically sort of goes around and is rejected routinely um, but he's also been given a car to go visit a magical professor that that seems to live in a but a, a library block of books, unsure, um, and is given a love potion for a dollar. He then sneaks into um, the love of his life, uh, sneaks into some champagne, basically drugs her, roofies her, uh, and then traps her into a, a life of loving him. Uh, when this gets too much, he decides he needs it out and tries to find the chaser, uh, the glove cleaner, um, that would allow the, basically the antidote to the love potion. But when he is about to sort of give her that, he finds out that she is pregnant um, and is about to enter into a loveless marriage with a child that's clearly going to be abused at some point down the line. So what were your <laughs> thoughts on this? Why do you think the child's going to be abused? Because he doesn't want this child. He's now trapped. He wanted her. He's going to resent the kid. He's going to get drunk. He's going to slap it around. <laughs> it's just this is just. Well, I mean, I, see, I just think he's going to be a neglectful dad like all of us had, you know, like you take care of the kid, you know, uh, you know, I'm over here with the paper. I'm really not all that interested. Oh, no, I think there's more to it. I didn't like this. I didn't like this, this character at all. There was something really disturbing about him. Um, I think this is this is I remember this episode uh, from earlier viewings and and. It's not a great episode, but I do like it. I do think it's it's a better episode overall. Yeah, uh, it has a point, and it's that thing. You know, we, we we again going back to previous episodes of like a nice place to visit. This um, idea of careful what you wish for, right, is, is clearly the premise again, um, and it sticks to landing. Like this clearly has a point. Like it's I don't you know there are certain points I don't like about this episode. But at least it's consistent and it hammers home its message in a, in a sort of successful where we've actually said a couple of previous episodes recently that they haven't stuck the landing or that it's been a bit wrapped up too fast or it's been too much. This one feels nice and concise. Like it fe- it, it works well as an episode. I'll give it that. Um, I think I have more problems with the consequences of this episode, though. OK, well. Before we get into that, let's let's backtrack to sort of your reaction to Roger Roger Shackleforth mm. and his, as you say, you know, sort of obsession or he's stalking uh, this girl, Leela. I don't feel it. I don't I don't. OK, the problem with Roger is that he is a wimp. Yep. He is needy. That's not an attractive quality. Um no. You know, and he's calling endlessly on the phone, pay phone. People are waiting. On the other hand, I mean, Leela is terrible. I mean, she is a terrible, mean person. But what's interesting here is that it occurred to me, I don't, he's not stalking her. They clearly had some sort of relationship. He calls her and says, um, can I come over? Right. I, I need to see you. He has clearly been in that apartment before. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They've had a sexual relationship. It's just yeah. she's done with him and he can't get the message and can't get over her. Mm. And I think that 
you know, so yeah, okay, he's calling her too much. She's obviously clingy, but she doesn't seem to mind that he calls. She, you know, uh, she oh, answers she and then it's me. Yeah, but she, this is, this is, this, I don't think there's like called, you know, dial, I don't think there's like dial showing. I don't think she can see who's calling. Right. Um, and so it's the fact he, but you, the, the point is, she answers, but like, he at the start of the episode, he calls by the time that gentleman has, has paid his dollar to each of the people to get to the front. And I, I kind of like that little moment in and of itself when he's giving a dollar to get to the next person along the queue, like paying them off. I kind of like that. That's really funny. Well, um, you like you like that as a Brit because the queue is the mark of civilization. Oh, it is. And if you respect yes. the queue so much that yeah. you have to bribe individually each person to get up. Man, you are on in civilization squared. That, that gentleman, yeah, that gentleman paying his way to get to the front of the queue. That's what capitalism is truly about: is paying your way to the front of the queue. Um, no, yeah, that was fine. But the, but what's his face? The the weasel. He's on his like fourth call. He's on his fourth call, and so you know, at some point, she, and that's what I think she's mean because she's probably answered before and gone, "Fuck, it's you. Go away." Yeah, and he keeps trying. So her meanness, I I take more as frustration. She's like, look, this is over. Like, go away. <laughs> and even like her sort of letting him into the apartment later on, because he turns up and he's got the, what, the champagne and the flowers and stuff. Um, yes, he's going to drug her. That's a, we'll talk about that. She lets him in, and there's this moment of like, it, it's almost like a oh, look. If I give you this, is it enough for you to? You know, I don't know. She's almost like, she, like yes, she's not great because she's like, oh, flowers and champagne. But like, there's still this moment of like, look, I'm giving you something, then go away. Like, this is almost, I'm trying oh, to draw yeah. a line under this, go away. And so she's she's not great, but she's not, I, I can see her frustration in this. Yeah. I mean, I think you could imagine that backstory, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're, you're right. I mean, you know, the, the, look, the repeated calling is, is terrible. I mean, but, the main thing for me about that is that she says Roger dropped dead. Yeah, that is as clear. I mean, so we're reviewing this. This is a 1960 episode, and we're mm-hmm. review, reviewing this in 2020, right? Post Me Too. One of the key things that men have to learn is when a woman says "drop dead," or a woman just says "no," yeah, not really interested, yeah, or fuck off i'm talking with my friend here okay just leave yeah you you know it's not a personal rejection yeah. you know like even if it is in the case of roger you've got your answer yeah the you point don't is want it's to a... be with you don't want to be with anyone who yeah. would say that and then recant it uh in the next phone call just take the take the point and yeah. leave this woman the, the, alone the, the point is it is a rejection it's not them playing hard to get it's a rejection okay. Move on, Roger. Well, what I mean is, it's not a rejection of your soul, right? No, it's not a rejection of you personally. It's a, re- it's a you rejection know, like, of, of your, your advances. I'm not right, interested. Sure. Move on. And and yeah. there are a million reasons why you know. I mean, why people connect or don't connect with each other. Mm-hmm. All of them, pretty much arbitrary, yeah. right? So you know, it's 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 not really that personal. It's not really about you, Roger. Um, even if it is about character traits of his that she doesn't like, you know, she is into other things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so, yeah. All right. So we're reviewing this from a later lens. I think you're right. I don't think the show thinks it's wrong that he is pursuing her after no. that point. No. And this is the thing, like she becomes almost like. <sighs> I don't know. Is is she a prize? Because when he drugs her, and then she twists, and like she, you know, she becomes uh, besotted with him. Then, having taken the love potion from this professor, um, she then becomes, like you say, just as needy and clingy and all this other stuff. And so, you know, and again, they, they, there's some great moments. There's some great dialogue in this little thing where, like, you know, she he lowers the book he's reading, and she's there, and he's like. Go sit in a go sit in a chair, and she's like, okay, okay, but well, which chair? And he's like, any of the chairs. And then she leans on him, and she's like, you know, is this bothering you? And he's like, no, no. He's like, did it bother you when I asked if you was bothering you? Like, it's quite funny. Like, they, I like the fact they're playing with this stuff. It's they're doing it well, and so I'm enjoying some of this stuff. Um, 
but I'm still sort of feeling like you know you've basically roofed it like this is still this is still a you've still drugs her into this situation and so you know it's it's sort of but what's so what's weird is though she acknowledges how she felt before mm-hmm. and so it's she but she's not going well yeah i was telling you to go away and it was really weird and then i changed my mind and it's sort of like mm-hmm. and so this potion thing works. i don't know it feels i think mean, again maybe it's because of the like you said me too maybe it's just different era but it feels weird this whole section well you know you, yes you're right that it technically i guess it's a roofie right um having said that love potions are part of fairy tales right mm-hmm. I mean, this is this is a, a i mean the old professor is <laughs> named a damon you know yes uh, on the card so i mean this is you know a sort of deal with the devil uh, I quite like his books and everything and, and his dialogue uh, of sort of like, yeah, everyone wants the love book, yeah. <laughs> you know, and the idea that it's a dollar, but the cure is a thousand dollars. And I know it's like, here's your free sample. I know you'll be back for the expensive shit. You know, I, I, I quite like all of that. But I mean, to me, it's just the love potion is a trope. Mm. If we're going to start, you know, Going back and saying, you know, you can't use a love potion as a trope because it's a date rape drug or something. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't use it. I mean, you might be more sensitive to it. And I think if this were made today, there would be more sensitivity to knowing that instead of just saying, oh, yeah, that's that trope he uses. Um, I, I do think that that dialogue is very good as, mm-hmm. you know, she... Uh, you know, she um, is besotted with him. Um, I do wish that there were some flip side, like you pointed out that she, the situation is reversed, that I think because they don't want Leela to ever be the good guy. She's, once again, an evil woman, right? Mm. Um, It would be better if she's calling him endlessly. Like he says, I'm I'm going to be, and then there's a scene where the phone keeps ringing at the bar or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, I was like, Oh my God. Um, where it really makes that dynamic clear. And then yeah. you sympathize with her more and have, I think you, that would support your interpretation of the relationship. Yeah. Uh, there's, I mean, there's interesting things though, things that, to- to around this thing uh, this is the same set as i said before as a nice place to visit this was the opulent apartment is now her apartment it's also he moves in with her yes to that to that place which i thought was interesting um clearly a set thing i know that's a logistical thing it reduces the number of sets i've got to build and all that kind of thing but i'm still taking it like there's a you know he moves in with her she's got the better apartment um it's all fine it's yeah it's it's um I think that's I'd say the dialogue's good. Their interaction's quite good as, as the characters. Like you know, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of Roger, but she. I, I get her frustration. But you're, you're right. They're trying to play her as. They're trying to play her as almost the villain, but I can't get past the fact that like, well, he's the the villain's probably a strong word in this, but he's the morally bankrupt one slightly in this. I don't know. It's just. It's just I kind of struggle with this concept of, of you know, this drug. Uh, but And then he's going to cut her loose at the end, which is obviously, again, you know, too much of a good thing or too much of the thing you really wanted. To then be um, re- confronted with this thing of, of the baby. Like, you know, she's pregnant. Um, not addressing the fact that she was more than willing to start drinking champagne when he came in. But again, <laughs> different, different era. It's um, my day of sex day. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've drugged you and impregnated you and drank some champagne. Yeah. Um, I'm curious as to sort of like say that, that that's it. So for him, and again, you say about a neglectful parent, but he doesn't want to break up the marriage because of the baby. Yeah. And again, this felt like a very sort of thing of its era. He's like, well, I'm, tra- I'm trapped in this besotted relationship. And I, I, I ain't gonna lie, like you know, there's psychological things in here. You talk about him being a neglectful, I sort of say, probably resentful father. But you know, I, and this is gonna sound weird in a sort of, you know, you get the whole Oedipal and, and kind of complex of like, but you know, boys and their moms and girls and their dads and sort of like, you know, that idea of like, you know, oh, he's a daddy's girl, he's a, he's a mummy's boy, whatever. 
whatever that kid is, whatever relationship that kid has with him, the mum's going to resent it because she's so besotted with him and if that. So she's she's going to have a sort of neglectful, neglectful father and a jealous mother. That kid is on one way, you know, that kid's on to a, a, a hide in either way. Um, and so it's this thing, the, the consequence of this is the fact that it impacts so many people. It's not just him. It's not like, oh, I've got to put up with, the, I know, the actions are now paying back on him. Oh, no, you've ruined three lives with this. Um, yeah, I mean, you're, God, you're so judgmental. Uh, <laughs> you know, guy wants a girl to love him. What are you going to do? You get a love potion. I mean, that's how it works, okay? We've, we've all I've tried it. Yeah, been there. It came off the back of a comic. No, it, it, I don't know. It just it, <laughs> with the X-ray specs. That's what. Yeah, it came with the free X-ray specs, and also I, I joined the sort of the um, you know Atlas uh, bodybuilding uh, group as well. Um, no, I don't know. Usually with these, it's very clear. You know, there've been some very clear cut things of you know I'll, I'll, I'll use again. Um, you know, a, a nice place to visit because that is the sort of care for what you wish for equivalent. You get that quite thing. You've got the, yeah, we've got Rocky Valentine, the sort of the 2D villain in that, but it's his comeuppance. Like nobody else is affected. It's his comeuppance. He's trapped because of his own imagination or whatever. In this, it's care for what you wish for, mm-hmm. but it's not just Roger that's impacted. Yes, it's it's played with him being trapped, but I'm still like, yeah, but she, is she are we, because she, I don't know, it just felt like she's sort of, discounted as as a sort of as, as being impacted by this and the child isn't even sort of mentioned it's such an offhand conclusion that it feels sort of dismissive and and that sort of is is it, it's fine because it all works and some of the comedy in it so is is good but i just feel uncomfortable with that ending well i mean of course you're right um and i think that leela is played as as basically evil Yes. Uh, at, certainly aloof at, le- at least um, not it's hard to empathize with her the mm-hmm. way she is depicted and I think that helps to sort of lessen this effect that you're saying of that there are consequences to others who are not involved in this deal between you know uh, the demon and, and Roger um, yeah I mean you know, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's hard for me because I just think, well, this is a trope, and you know, this is this is what happens in fairy tales. Um, I will say that sort of part of part of your objection to um, be, the sort of earlier "Be careful what you wish for" episode, a nice place to visit. Um, I have to this too. I think this is more successful in terms of as a story, but also in terms of as a wish fulfillment plot. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and a, a sort of classic turn on the love potion trope, right? Yeah. Which is why it's hard for me to quite analyze it. And in, in, you're right about everything you're saying. But, you know, I just see it as a spin on that, right? You know, the same way that, you know, there's a spin on selling your soul to the devil. And, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I mean, okay, so this is a clever spin on that. But anyway, I mean, I I had some of the same response to this that you had to that earlier episode in the sense that I thought there are ways around this, right? Yeah. Like as clingy as Leela is, right? She's annoying and clingy and, and fawning. I have had relationships like this. Um, you know, you can't tell someone, okay, listen, I love you. This is annoying. I, you know, you're going to have to, Restrain yourself not to ask me 20 times, you know, like you just asked me whether I want this, you know, honey, I love you, but, you know, and you can, you know, for lack of a better, I mean, okay, uh, you can train someone. Okay, yeah. here you are saying, you know, I love potion is a date rape mm-hmm. drug. And I'm over here saying, well, you know, I'm not bothered by it. You know, he just <laughs> train her better. But I mean, Control your woman. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I wouldn't use that phrase, but, you know, you can't instruct somebody in what you want better than he does. Yes. And he seems like he's so pat. He's so. Part of the problem is that he's so passive in that relationship where he's yes. so needy and then he gets the love potion. But that doesn't really fix 
his passivity. It fixes his neediness because now he has the love, but he's still passive and he can't just tell her, you know, I'm reading a book here. It's a little distracting having you at my feet. Um, you know, I love you, baby, but, you know, I need some space to read this book. Yes. That should not be that difficult. No, no, no. Yeah, you are right in that. that you are totally right in that, that, that you know, that there could be these discussions and, and, and it doesn't address that in it at all. He, he, it's he's confrontational. He's scared of confrontation because his, his response to all of this is to run out. Yeah. And he's like, he like to say, because yeah, you could have stopped and gone, you know, yeah, you're right. You sit there, do your thing. I'll enjoy being around you. Being in the same room, just sharing the space is wonderful. But you just go sit over there. You read your book. I'll read my book. And, you know, we can enjoy them in that way. Yeah, those conversations could and should happen. But yeah, he's going to go, uh, no, just just hug my smoking jacket until I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that, though. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a nice touch, like, you know, that he leaves her the smoking jacket. And I like that he returns with champagne again, you know, and yeah. flowers the champagne, the sort of repetition, uh, and knows that, well, this worked once, and she'll be so charmed by the champagne and flowers that, once again, she won't ask any questions about what I'm putting. Although, of course, at this point, she loves him. He could just say, you know, yeah, I want you to have this. Ah, you know, what? You want to know what it is? No, I don't feel like telling you. Yeah. You know, yeah. Apparently, just you just are fine with anything. Yeah. No, it's it. The thing that you say, comparing this to, to the previous one, a nice place to visit, this is a better episode. Like, it works better. The, the dialogue is is snappier. It, it knows what it's doing much better. Tr- tropes aside and all the other things, like, it, it works a lot better. Um, and yeah, I know I'm asking too many questions around sort of the conclusion of this show, of this episode. You know, it, but because it, it works as a it's it's a, it's a natural conclusion to this cycle. Yes, they're in a relationship. They're in a sexual relationship. Yes, she gets pregnant. That's a consequence, and he's going to have to sort of face up to these consequences, and that's the point. So, no, I, I do think this is a better episode. Um, but it's one of the things where I constantly see these episodes. I'm like, there's a slightly tighter version of this. Oh yeah, um, you know, and again, like you said, you've made the point very well before that these were being banged out on a weekly basis. Someone's having to sort of like you know get these scripts and things together very very quickly. So, um, but it's still good. I still like this episode. That it has problems, but it's definitely a good episode. It's good. It's, it's it made me chuckle uh, about certain it's things. It's a little rapey, I think, is what you're trying to say. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. I mean, I'm not going to deny it. Yeah. Uh, those implications are there. Um, As a final thought, I do want to single out uh, George Grizzard, who plays Roger. Um, He's, you know, he's quite good. And, Mm. you know, you might not like his character and I don't like his character, but he uh, he reminds me, especially when he's lounging in that apartment. He reminds me of Tony Curtis with his sort of eye roll in in some romantic comedies. Um, So I, I did I did enjoy his performance. Especially once he he's in the powerful position, uh, his annoyance yes. is played very well. Well, even even his, I actually do like him. I think he, I think that, again, the cast of this is actually pretty solid. They're all, they, again, they've got some quite good comedy timing. Um, when he's talking with with a Damon, um, and he says uh, the fact of the matter, the fact of the matter, and he said like the, the guy says, "You've said that three times. What are you? What are you here for?" <laughs> so even between them, they got some pretty good banter and sort of like you know the patter between them. It, it works well, um, and he does the physical side, of it, you know, the physical sort of the eye roll and the facial expression. It's, it's, it's good actually. It's well, it's a well constructed episode, and so yeah, no, I do think it's a good episode. Um, it, it just may not date well those with those tropes. Mm. Um, but yes, anyway, any final thoughts? No, I I'm good. Excellent. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Just another one down. We're still trekking through the Twilight Zone, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you'll join us on the next episode. <laughs>